Hallelujah. I want to salute all the ministers here. Thank you for all you do for the Lord and for the body of Christ. And of course, I celebrate everyone here tonight. And if you are ready to receive from the Lord, can you lift your hands toward heaven as we whisper to the Father of all spirits. Just say something to him because he's worthy of our praise. Him that is immortal. Him that is without corruption. He existed before the beginning. His name is called Alpha Omega. That means he was before time began. And at the end of the age, he will still be there. Because existence itself is what he is. We exist, but he is existence. The one who was, who is, and who is to come. When we look upon him, we are broken, we are humbled. Because no creation, no creature can stand before him. The Bible said the 20 and 4 elders, whenever he appears on his throne, they fall on their faces and they cry holy. Because truly there is none like him. It's a privilege to stand in the presence of God. And so as we lift our voices tonight, we trust that we will vibrate at his frequency. Rahavana Sabariana Mahak. Zelevania Sabrato Sevayana. Zehila Parina Sava. Yeelo Sesaina Barahana. Yela Mandariava no Savakai. You reign. You reign. You reign. You reign. Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. You reign, you reign, you reign. Kados, Kados. You reign, you reign, you reign. Ya branda savara donas. Sayanda la bariana maha. Kados. You reign, you reign, you reign. Kados, Kados. You reign, you reign, you reign. Rabana Sabayad Salibanana Vayata Faris Sabaranda Rabaha You reign, you reign, you reign Ah, You are mighty on your throne Ali Ali
we come by the records of the blood. We come by the testimony of the name. The name of our God is strong tower. We come by the testimony of the name. And so we speak forth the oracles of God in faith and in power. And so we command shiftings in the atmosphere. We command movements and alignments in the spirit. Aya Savana Hazava. Yeliana Manteriba. Rakiba Hazade. Yelebania Mana. And so we ascend higher than the princes and the powers in the land. We speak from the heights of the galaxies. Rebono Savayana. Savayana Marianda Parak. Yarina Patava Ratas. We ascend in the spirit by the wings of the spirit. We climb the heights, the mountains of Zion. We speak from above the galaxies. And so we command princes in darkness. We command them to bow. We shift things in the heavens. We utter our voice like the thunder and the thunderings of Yahweh. We say let the powers and the forces in the land and over the lives of men give way from the heavens. We speak as princes in Zion. We enter into the name of God, the name of Yodhe, Vahe. We speak from the secret place of thunder, from the lightnings of God. Oh, Yataya, Renea Sabak. You see, many songs of order will rise in the course of this meeting. Many songs of order will rise because there will be an awakening. There will be an awakening. We shake the forces of the fountains of the great deep. And there will be an awakening. They that sleep and slumber, they will hear the echoes of eternity, the voice of the Son of God. Yaravana Sabai Lakamak, Yelevenano Sabai, Sayina Barake, Eros Nevos, Eros Nevos, Eros Nevos. We align with the angels of the presence. Eros, Nero, Sassina, Hayabo, Eakai. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. See, the first thing the Lord will be doing tonight is to cause an awakening, a spiritual awakening in the hearts of people. Some of you were seasoned intercessors. You had the power to stand and to wage war in the spirit. But you see, the spirit has become lukewarm. While the message is going on, the Lord will be shooting fire, balls of fire into the hearts of many. And there will be a stirring and a vibration. It doesn't matter your age. Because what we deal with is an eternal dimension. It's not limited by time. 
there will be an awakening. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We honor the angels of God that are part of this service. We salute the servants of God and the spirit of just men made perfect. We honor the presence of God. And we lift our voices in worship. We say, Hallow be thy name. Be praised forever. Let the worship and the memory of your name endure for eternity. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You may be seated. It's important to understand the reason for the breath that is on our nostrils. A lack of that understanding will make us live our lives as though there is no meaning to existence. You see, one of the things that distinguishes us in the class of mortals is the fact that our lives are intrinsically joined with the life of God. The meaning of our existence cannot be articulated except as the purposes of God are understood. Other creatures and other animals that exist on this plane exist only to survive. So breath for them is another ticket to live another day. And so why they walk into days and times, it's all about what to eat, what to drink and where to rest. But man is not of that class. The meaning of our life transcends breath. And that's why when breath is withdrawn, we will still exist. Because we existed before breath was given. And when breath is taken away, we will still exist as creatures of eternity. We did not begin in time. So we will not end in time. So while we walk through time as pilgrims on the face of the earth, it's important for us to journey back into the bellies of God and find out the reason for which it was necessary for us to exist. Else, there will be no distinction between us and every other creature that has breath on their nostrils. So the Lord appeared to Isaiah, Jeremiah, and he said, before you were formed in your mother's womb, before the fabrics of your essence were captured, and articulated in flesh. I knew you. How he existed. Cannot be trapped in the minds of man. You know he said. As thou knowest not. How the bones are formed. In the bellies of her that is with child. So knoweth not thou. The ways of the spirit. And the works of God. So before man. Became. A, an existential reality in the form of flesh he existed according to the movements of the ways of the spirit because before bones were formed something existed it's called the ways of the spirit that's why Jesus said when man is born again he becomes like the wind he said as the wind bloweth 
thou listest not from whence it cometh or how it goeth. That is how man that is born again looks like. Because before man was captured in the bellies and in the womb of the mother, that man existed like the wind. He was according to the dynamics of the spirit. But what the fall does to man is that when he begins to exist, he wants to live as flesh. But man is not flesh. Man is not flesh. Man is part of the components of God. When he said he will make man in his image and after his likeness, the Bible said he went to the dust of the ground. According to Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. And he gathered the dust together. And God took of himself. The breath of his nostrils. And he implanted it in dust. So man is actually God. Existing in flesh. Man is actually divinity. Expressed through we are beyond mortality. When you want to see the elements of God, He doesn't want you to journey too far. He has created a being that carried His essence and He put Him in dust so you can interact with Him. But the fall makes us to live like flesh. So life becomes for us what to eat and what to drink is beyond that because a time will come when you will not feed on food a time will come when you will feed on the bread of life and the tree of life that is in the courts of God a time will come when what you will live on is the word of God and the presence of God because when Adam was in Eden Adam was not breathing oxygen Adam was breathing the presence of God So Jesus came and breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Ghost. He was breathing the Holy Ghost. He was not breathing oxygen. He was breathing the Holy Ghost. And that was how man was designed to operate. But what is it that have made us mundane? What is it that have deadened us so much that we can no longer sense the vibrations of God? In Genesis chapter 3 verse 8, the Bible said, Early in the morning, in the cool of the day, in the cool of the day, the voice of God came walking in the garden. So Adam knew when the energy level on earth changes. He knew when heaven simulated with time. He knew when God showed up and instantly he could relate with God. Because for him, existence was intercourse with the spirit of God. To him, existence was the ability to stand in the presence of God, to hear his voice and to breathe his essence. But now, even when we come to church, church service becomes too long. The reason is because we are detached from meaning. We are detached from essence. When we go to the place of prayer, becomes a mountain that we can't climb. The reason is because we are detached from essence. Adam could live in God's presence for aeons and he didn't feel it because that is where he was created to be. That was what defined his life. The quality of his life was the texture of his communion. So even when we come to church, if there are no enticing things, then we can't come. So we can come for the thanksgiving service and dance, but we can't come for the vigils. Because the vigil is actually a place where we journey from time into eternity. The vigil is actually a ground of migration from flesh to spirit. The vigil is actually a counter where everyone stands before his creator. Men can speak, 
but only the word of God can live in your spirit. But many can't hear. And so the subject of divine encounters is one of the heaviest molecules to consider. Because if a man does not have encounters in his life, he has not begun to live. Encounters are actually moments of the spirit where divinity invades humanity so that the purposes of God that are in the spirit can find expression in time. Encounter is actually an interface between immortality and mortality so that that which is locked in the bellies of him that is immortal can play out among man. Men who do not have encounter have no story to tell in eternity. Because when the times of this age are over and the annals of eternity is open, when the chronicles of kings are read, they will have nothing to say. Because encounter is the ground where the document and the blueprint of your life is handed over to you. We didn't come here to survive. Our life is a story that God is telling from eternity. And until you can journey back through the corridor of encounter, you will not know what was written concerning you. He said, before you were born, I knew you. We may be 8 billion on earth, but before you were born, I knew you. There was a definite ordination concerning your life because number does not translate to purpose. We may be billions, but the one before whom we have to do, we are engraved in the palms of his hand and even the hairs of our head are numbered. But how many can journey back to find out what was written concerning them? That's where life begins from. This is why we are filled with ambitions. This is why we are full of flesh. This is why we have competitions everywhere. Because only few know what was said concerning them. When God echoed before we came into time, every one of us, there was a definite syllabus written for us. You didn't begin here. You are not sitting under daddy today because you are living in Asaba. Before time began, when we lined up in that immortal assembly, everyone that is born of this ministry lined up behind him. That's why you found him in time. And if you were not part of that assembly, your heart can connect. Encounters. They define the purpose of existence. Encounters. They bring us the power to live according to the dictates of our eternal ordinations. Encounters. They are actually the definers of life. I want to take it gradually tonight so that I can set the coordinates. Tomorrow I will have time to minister in the spirit. But I want everyone to be awoken to what was said concerning him. Because what makes you invincible begins when you can travel into the invincible. Jesus journeyed through the face of the earth. His goal was to start the church. But there was no way he could. Because men have not traveled into eternity. He labored with them for over three years. His goal was to plant the embassy of heaven on earth because the first embassy that was planted was Eden and it was compromised. And when Eden was, was, was established, God brought Eden from the spirit realm. In Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 13, he said to Lucifer, you were in Eden in the mountain of God. So Eden was not a garden that God planted in time. Eden was a dimension of God's embassy in the spirit that he planted in time. So that when you get to Eden, you can traffic heaven and earth as though you were in heaven. That's why God could show up in Eden and he doesn't move from his throne. Because it was a simulation between earth and heaven. And when that Eden was compromised because the government of the serpent entered Eden, God wanted to plant another Eden. And the name of that Eden is called the church. But there was no man who could join into the spirit. And Jesus gathered his disciples together. And he said, who do men say, I, the son of man, I am. 
and the disciples thought that spiritual knowledge was a function of structure you know that was the training they received because in Matthew chapter 17 verse 2 the Bible said a few days later he took Peter, James and John to the mountain and he was as he prayed he was transfigured before them and the first thing Peter said was let us build three houses here he didn't know that this was actually a movement of the spirit that wise men should latch on and to align. He wanted to trap God and that was not the way of the spirit. So when Jesus showed up, he said, who do men say, I, the son of man, I am. They began to bring the conclusions of the schools of thought. He said, some say you are Elias. Some say you are Jeremiah. Some say you are Isaiah. Some say you are one of the prophets. And obviously, none of them had traveled to the spirit realm so it could be a monument so long as its root is not in the spirit it could be a monument and that also translates to our lives we can become mighty on earth but we are monuments unless our root is in the spirit you heard that the talking a while ago he said god told me go to asaba it was not an assumption That is the only way the gates of hell cannot prevail. 90% of Christians today are struggling. The reason is because their life is not rooted in the spirit. And if it's not rooted in the spirit, the gate of hell will prevail. You know, when I started, I come, I see buildings like this. I see ministers, senior ministers, and I think I can do what they are doing. And I jumped into it. And when I, I pioneered the cell, I did everything, spent money, prayed in tongues, and on the day of the meeting, only few of my friends came. Everybody I invited, some of them I sent text messages, some of them I called them few days to the meeting. I was nice to them. I now realized that there is a power that makes destiny to happen. It's only for men who join into the spirit. The reason certificates are rejected is because it was not rooted in the spirit. The reason lives are wasted is because they are not rooted in the spirit. Wise men travel back to eternity before they live in time. If you don't journey back, you can't exist. You can breathe, but you will not exist and you will not count. Because when the princes come, it is the people that carry the light of God on their head that they dread. This is why we must labor to journey into the spirit. Jesus labored. And he said, who do you say I, the son of man, I am? And Peter said, you are the Christ. The son of the living God. And instantly, Jesus woke up. He said, flesh and blood have not revealed this to you. But my father, which is in heaven. And on this revelation, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Three things. The first is that nothing in time makes meaning except it takes bearing from the spirit your life your career nothing will make meaning except it takes bearing from the spirit why do i say that all the answers they gave even though it came from noble quarters jesus discarded them that is the way god discards the lives and the assignments of men he said bring an offering unto me and Cain went in the flesh and brought corrupt offering before the Lord and he discarded it. But Abel brought of the firstlings of all that he had and God received it. If it doesn't come from the heart and the womb of the spirit, no matter how beautiful it is, it will be rejected. Some say you are Elias. Some say you are Jeremiah. He discarded them. So a man can show up before the Lord and say I am good looking so you will use me another man can show up and say my father is a pastor so you will use me another man will show up and say I have money to spend so you will use me and God will discard because he doesn't know that the first labor is to travel into God first before he can travel out flesh and blood have not revealed this to you but my father which is in heaven and he said thou art Peter so God's appointment begins when men join into the spirit thou art Peter it is when an angel 
announces a man that the elements of this world bow before him. Man will struggle until Jesus was the son of God. For 30 years he was irrelevant. When Jesus' life was outlined in John chapter 1, he said, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. The same was with God in the beginning. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. The life was the light of man. Four credentials. He was God. He was creator. He was life and he was light. Yet God, creator, life and light was irrelevant in this world for 30 years. Until at the baptismal service, he said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Instantly, things changed. And Jesus did not go to announce himself. He ran to hide for 40 days. And after the temptation, when he returned, the Bible says his fame went abroad. How? What is the difference? How come 40 days is more relevant than 30 years? Because he said, this is my beloved son. That's the same utterance. Thou art Peter. And the story changed. Because Peter has caught something in the spirit. There are many of us today, we have many good ideas. What we don't know is that the third protocol fights everything that is good. This is why even your compound, if you don't weed it, grass will grow. But if you plant a flower there, you need to water it every day, else it will not grow. Why? Because anything good, the gates of hell will fight it. Many with great ideas, many with great destiny, but they don't know that they need to catch something in the spirit first. So they come with their ideas. They come with their witty invention. They come with their understanding. They come with all the advantages and the gate of hell cut them off. Because first, it must be caught in the spirit. Second, it must be announced. And thirdly, the powers of destiny is activated. He said, and Jesus, Matthew 4, 15, returned in the power of the spirit. Nothing stops it anymore. That is one of the most significant benefits of encounters. And that's what I want to share in the next 10 minutes. Encounter is the activator of the power of destiny. And until the power of destiny is activated, the gate of hell will prevail. Even if it is the mandate of God, even if it is the assignment of God, even if it is what the territory needs, the gate of hell will prevail. Until there is an encounter, there will be no emancipation. I pray somebody hears me tonight. I experienced something very terrible that turned my life around. Serving as a young man and one of our colleagues from a very wealthy home. Never had need for Alawi. And two weeks to POP, the father died. A young man that was already being ticked to work with Eric Airline over 10 years ago. Things were working on their own accord. His confidence was on the powers of his family. But he is struck. And his life turned around. All of a sudden, his father's friends turned their back at him. And I saw a glorious destiny turned upside down in a moment. And I now knew what the Bible meant when it said, Woe unto him that put his trust in the arm of flesh. The reason is because there is a gate called the gate of Hades. Life cannot be lived casually. Everything you call an advantage can become a mirage unless there's an encounter to endorse it. This is why we can't live as normal men. Everything can become a mirage. Everyone must join into the spirit for himself. It is the call of existence that everyone will meet his creator. 
And wise men meet their creator in time, not in eternity. Because when you meet him in eternity, it might just be judgment. But if you meet him in time, you will straighten your path and your life will be a testimony. He is the Holy Ghost, Spirit of the living God. He is the Holy Ghost, scepter of the King of Kings. He is the Holy Ghost, Spirit of the age to come. He's changing everything in obedience to God. The activator of the power of your destiny. None of you here is small. None of you here is disadvantaged. Can I tell you something? The family you come from is not necessarily an advantage or a disadvantage. If you have the right encounters. Most of the great men that are changing their worlds today came from very poor backgrounds. But they knew what it meant to catch God. So they were God chasers. But the generation that we are in today is a generation that rely on only heritages. They never catch anything in the spirit. So even what the fathers labor for, when it is handed over, they waste it. Because they don't know how it is caught. I heard Warren Buffett said something. He said he will not plague his children with his wealth. It will be a burden for them. If they don't know how to create it, they can't manage it. And so it is in the spirit. Your tears can be wiped away in a moment if you know how to engage the spirit. Your sorrows can be turned around. The question is, what are the quality of your encounters? When you look at a man's life, the quality of his life is the quality of his encounters. The quality of a man's life is the quality of his encounter. Saul was a commoner from the tribe of Benjamin in one day. But he encountered a prophet. And something changed. He migrated from a commoner to a king by an encounter. The quality of your life is the quality of your encounter. So if you are wise, you will live your life pursuing after God to catch something. What you need for your destiny is not anywhere. It's in the spirit. But the question is, can you climb the mountain? Encounters. The empowerment for destiny. I want to show you five disadvantages that encounters turn around to show you that your condition is not hopeless and before this conference is over most of you will have literal encounters some with the Lord some with his angels some with the word of the Lord the things that make for lasting changes they are on the altars of encounters I want to show you five disadvantages that encounters turn around and make a mess of. An encounter can rubbish your, your limitation as if it was nothing. An encounter can change a mountain before you to a plane. And it will look as if it never existed. That's why wise men chase after encounters. Spirit of victory, cover us with your wing. Blow, blow like a mighty wind. Acts chapter 7, verse 1 and 2. Now, Abraham came from the regions of Mesopotamia, it's called the Hall of the Chaldees. And that was a region that was plagued by idolatry. Abraham's grandfather Nahor was one of the princes of Nimrod that built the tower of Babel. So they knew how to survive without God. It was a territory where men had perfected how to survive without God. So Abraham came from an idolatrous background. 
where he looked as if God does not count. His father was part of the architects that raised the tower of Babel. And God came and divided their language and they scattered around the world. So it was a generation that God was against. So there was no advantage that he had. It's just like some of us that are from idolatrous background. Your grandfather can be a, 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 a priest of a dark prince. But it's not a disadvantage. My grandfather was a prince of darkness. They told me ministers that succeed, some of them have a genealogy of pastors. That this one succeeded because he's the sixth in the genealogy of pastors. The great grandfather, the grandfather and the father were evangelists. That's why he succeeded. I went back to scripture and I discovered it's not an advantage. Even if it is for the one who doesn't have that, it's not a disadvantage because Abraham came from darkness. But the Bible said something. When Stephen was about to be stoned, he began to read the chronicles of Abraham. And he said, and he said, men and brethren, fathers, hearken, the God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he dwelt in Charan. Before Abraham ever began to have meaning in life, the Lord had appeared to him. And in Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 to 2, the secret of his greatness was predicated upon the encounter, not his ancestry. Is there an advantage in a godly heritage? Yes! But in case you don't have godly heritage, are you doomed? No! Blessed is the man that feared the Lord and delighted greatly in his commandment. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. So a godly heritage is an advantage. What if you don't have the remedy is an encounter? My father may not be a governor. I'm not disadvantaged. My father may not be a pope. I am not disadvantaged. Because there is something called spiritual encounter. And God is not a respecter of persons. Any man that seeks the Lord, the Lord will be gracious to appear unto him. Because he's plenteous in redemption. Encounter is the leveler in time. The buffer of destiny is encounter. Now the Lord had appeared to Abraham. Get thee out of thy country. When God wanted to, to handle Abraham's matter, he even taught Abraham. Because he came from a people that had confidence in their family. Have you seen people like that? My father just came from the governor's house and the governor said things will be why. You have not seen time. If you have lived here enough, you will know that this time does not exist on a solid foundation. He said the world is on water. So nothing on this, on this, in this realm is solid. The only thing you can stand on, the pillars you can stand on, is the name of the Lord. That's why I said the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run it daring. Get thee out of thy country, out of thy kindred, out of thy father's house. Come to the land that I will show you. And he said, in blessings I will bless you. And in thee shall all the families of the earth, including that family you left, shall be blessed. No believer is disadvantaged. People are only bereft of encounters. This is a man without a heritage, yet he was not disadvantaged. The second thing you will call a disadvantage is a physical inability. God has called you to lead and you say you are dull and you think it's a disadvantage God has called you to speak to a generation and you say you are a stammerer you think it's a disadvantage God has told you I will make you a queen and you looked at yourself in the mirror and you are not fair and then you are wondering which prince will love me there is something that remedies physical disadvantages it's called an encounter Moses was a stammerer had no advantage at all to lead and to command the generation. But an encounter turned the story around. And in Exodus chapter 3 from verse 1. The Bible said something amazing. Moses had been laboring. 
for 80 years of his life until the Bible said and now Moses kept the flock of Jethro his father-in-law the priest of Midian and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God the end of that physical disadvantage is what to come to the mountain of God the stammerer came to the mountain of God you wanted to start the business no capital and you have asked all your friends and everybody you know is now hopeless he said come to the mountain of God there is a place that no foul know it the vultures eyes have not looked upon it it is called the mountain of God where the disadvantage of men no longer counts and when God said Moses he said but it's a stammerer and the Lord told him something who created the mouth you think you are ugly so you will not succeed who, how do men see you can be ugly but the one that God chose for you can see you as a princess that's why they say beauty is in the eyes of the beholder so God can choose to make him see you the way he wants him to see you but people don't labor to come to the mountain many men have shut their destinies down by looking at themselves what we look for is the mountain of God they looked unto him and they were radiant and their faces were not ashamed physical disadvantage has nothing to do with your destiny if only you will have the right encounter I've heard a lot of stories they tell people it will not work who told you you like this can do it the person doing it by what ability is he doing it there is a power called the power of ordination that's what encounters give the third disadvantage or hindrance is territorial hindrance where you come from can be a disadvantage remember what daddy said when he came up ministries were not thriving in Asaba why is this one thriving so Asaba was not the problem the men that came to Asaba were the problem they didn't have the encounter that could cause the princes to bow Daniel was in Babylon everything about Babylon is corruption you couldn't go to Babylon and survive the children of Israel had lost their heritage they did not even remember where they came from anymore only Daniel and his friends were upright in Babylon but something kept them standing they knew the God that revealed secrets encounters they tell you you will not succeed because you are here and there there are many people in the best places in the world not succeeding a lady called me two weeks ago has been in London for 16 years without a job struggling barely to survive 16 years meanwhile there are many Nigerians traveling through Sahara Desert to go to Europe 16 years in London without a job and the word of the Lord went forth and in less than a month she got a job with an official car I told her what makes the difference is where you are speaking from there is a battle in the spirit called the battle of heights that was why Lucifer wanted to exalt his throne because the higher you go the more authority you exert that's why Moses came to the mountain of God when Moses came to the mountain of God the mountain of God is higher than the mountain of Egypt so Moses could come with one staff and destroy the civilization called Egypt one staff he didn't have an army he had an encounter one staff can bring down the government of a nation one staff can bring down a civilization because of an encounter he went to the mountain of God your territory is not a disadvantage the question is what are the qualities of your encounters I'll be rounding up in another five minutes and we'll pray briefly like I said it's the first night I just came to trouble the waters 
but most of you will have destiny changing encounters before this conference is over you have looked at men before you have looked up to men before go and ask people who succeed they will tell you how many men failed them if you see a man who looks up to men he has not succeeded that's why he's still deceived he said woe unto him that put out his trust in the arm of flesh any man who succeeds will tell you is a spirit God told me God made it happen I learned it by following men that succeeded and no one had a testimony apart from God why do we labor preaching is to lead people to God that's why we don't preach ourselves we preach Christ and we his servants because every man must meet his creator before he leaves this realm that's what we define the quality of his life but that's the last thing believers are doing so a believer can travel from one state and go and sit down for three weeks to see a prophet but he cannot stay in the place of prayer for three days if you woke up tonight your story can change it's possible that's what I came to tell you it's possible the fourth disadvantage is the scar of a wrong life some people think they can't succeed anymore because they live the wrong life I was a harlot I was a murderer I was a criminal the life of Paul told us otherwise he wrecked on the church God sent him back to build the church the brothel where the harlot live she can go back to that brothel and change it the thief can go back into the, the, the world of criminals and change it the difference is encounters in Acts chapter 9 from verse 4 to 5 he had received letters to go to Damascus to wreak havoc on the church yet again and the Lord appeared he said so so why persecutest thou me and instantly turned he said who are you Lord his life was about to change you may have become a slave of the wrong life you may have become a victim of the past but an encounter can rewrite the story Joyce Mayer was raped by her father but no scar can stand when you go through the fires of encounters you can be a known criminal no scar can stand the fires of encounter so so why persecutest thou me who art thou lord i am jesus whom thou persecutest it is hard to kick against the pricks now rise ye up and go into the city you will be told what you should do and a thief became an apostle rehab the known harlot her house was on top of the city the fence of the city that was where she lived so anybody coming in and out of the city must see her she was a renowned harlot but she had an encounter and Rahab became part of the progenitors of Jesus Christ it is recorded in scriptures today that Jesus came through her lineage what was the difference encounters it doesn't matter if you were a harlot it doesn't matter if you have even had two children from two different fathers five children from five different fathers did you not read the story of the Samaritan woman go call thy husband I have no husband in that you said true because you've had five husbands and the one you are living with is not thy husband who are you and suddenly if you knew who it was that asked thee for a drink you would have asked of me and I would, give, I would have given you rivers of living water who are thou I am he and instantly a harlot turned to an evangelist a woman with the worst life the whole city knew her and one harlot took over the whole city because the whole city came to Jesus who taught her the gospel when did she read the Torah she was not trained but she had an encounter 
She never went to a Bible school, but she had an encounter. The gospel is not for those who are learned. The gospel is for those who have seen the Lord. Because Mary Magdalene, from whom seven demons were cast out, was the first to preach the New Testament. Encounters can turn the lives of people around. Before she went to the well, she was a harlot. When she came back from the well, she was an evangelist. The power of encounter. Before you came to church, you may be a liar, but you may go back from church as an apostle. It's an encounter. You may come to church as a beggar, but you may go back as a king. It's a 400 broken men came to David in Kevadulam. And David showed them the way of the Lord. And this man became the mighty man of David. When David wanted to build the house of God, those men gave goose worth 22 billion dollars in our day 400 broken men that were in debt the difference is encounter instead of troubling your life and living hopelessly go and cleave to the horns of the altar and your disadvantage will vanish he said when Israel left Egypt Judah was a sanctuary. He said the mountains saw them and fled. He said the mountains keep like ram before them. Even Jordan went back and he said, Why fleetest thou, O mountain? Why skip it thou, O mountain? Jordan, why are you going back? He said, Let the whole earth tremble. Sense of let the whole earth tremble. They told you nothing works in Asaba. You have not had an encounter. You have not had an encounter. When a spirit wants to show you his might, he will even send you what is noble. He can tell you, go and start selling pure water. And then your life will disgrace the spirits of Asaba. When a spirit wants to exhort you, he can tell you, go and stand by the roadside and begin to sell razor blade. And then you will know that the powers of Asaba is nothing compared to the beauty and the splendor and the might of God. He said, the voice of God is upon many waters. The voice of God is full of majesty. He said, the mountains keep at that voice. He discovered the forest. He divided the flames of fire. The voice of God. When God speaks from the mountain, everything bows. Let the earth tremble. This is what we know, that we enter territories with boldness because we come in the name of the Lord. Nothing is a disadvantage if a man can have the right encounters. Nothing. And the last thing is to be a child and to be inexperienced. You know, that can be a great disadvantage. So they, they want to employ people in Chevron and they now say, well, you must have 10 years advantage. A certificate of a man with encounter can make for an advantage. In 1 Samuel chapter 3 from verse 1. He said on the church Samuel ministered before the Lord. And in those days the voice of God was cast. But something happened. He had an encounter. And suddenly inexperience was no longer a disadvantage. Suddenly being a child was no longer a disadvantage. And in 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 19. He said and the whole of Israel knew that the Lord had established Samuel as a prophet. Encounters establish men. Because the word of the Lord appeared again in Shiloh. The word of the Lord appeared to Samuel in Shiloh. The Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. I read the story of Smith Wigglesworth 45 years. Illiterate and a plumber. But he had that encounter and he brought his word to its knees he was such a cruel man that he could lock his wife outside in the cold but an encounter changed him to become a global apostle of faith there's no disadvantage in time because encounter brings the dimension of heaven and superimposes it into your realm what then is the protocol of encounters if encounters are so important, how do we have it? Is it available to everybody? Yes. 
Because everybody was created to live in the present. So encounters are available to everybody. The question is, have you had yours? How do encounters begin? First, it begins with hunger. A body can be stirred in your heart. You don't know what it means. But all of a sudden, you want to go to church. All of a sudden, you want to pray. All of a sudden, you want to stay with the brethren. All of a sudden, you want to hear the word of the Lord. That is the woo of the spirit. When the spirit begins to woo a man, he begins to put burdens in the heart. That's how God answers questions that men cannot answer. He begins to put a body to draw you. Did you read about Moses? He said, and Moses came to Horeb, the mountain of God. Horeb is the backside of the mountain. It's not where to graze. But something that was invincible was drawing him. So Jesus said, no man cometh to me except him that the father have drawn. So when hunger begins to rise in your heart, wise men begin to attend to hunger. The reason why most of our lives don't count is because we are bought bodies. The Holy Ghost brings a hunger and that's when you begin to watch a seasonal film. Is it a sin to watch a seasonal film? No. But seasonal film is a doctor of abortion. It will remove the hunger from your spirit. And then one man will be moving around one mountain for a lifetime. How many bodies have you aborted? You were drinking and suddenly you saw that guy and something moved in your heart. And you say, I want to be like this guy. And God begins to draw you and you waste it. You want to know wise men? Wise men are stewards of bodies. So they never miss their seasons. Because when a season of encounter comes, it comes with hunger. It comes with drawings. You can be with Jesus yet waste. Because Judas was with him and wasted. If you don't know how to steward the resources of the spirit, you will waste. The greatest blessings in this world is not the gift of a car. The greatest blessings in this world, one of them is the gift of spiritual hunger. When that burden comes, what do you do with it? What do you do with it? That's what will determine your emancipation. Because the power to change your story is in an encounter. But what takes you to the mountain of encounter is a hunger. It's a body. It's a body. Sometimes it's just a song. And that song is playing in your heart for two weeks. But many don't know how to steward it. And they lose it. They keep losing it. And they are praying and asking God, when will my story change? Your story has changed many times. But you didn't know how to enter. Because he said, the labor of the foolish weary at every one of them. They know not how to enter the city. They think a man of God will lay hands on them and change their story. But when that man laid hands on them, he released the hunger in their spirit. It was their duty to attend to that hunger they couldn't. So Paul said to Timothy, he said, this charge, give I unto thee, that thou will fan to flame the gift of God that was put in you by the laying on of hands of the presbytery. It doesn't end with laying on of hands. That organic thing that begins in your spirit, what do you do with it? That's what determines the encounters you will have. Your life can be an endless stream of encounters if you can count your hunger and preserve your bodies. Some people have many bodies in one month. They have bought all of them. They have bought all of them. But the Bible said concerning Jesus, early in the morning, in the cool of the day, he went to a solitary place. There he dug into bodies. Because many times, he will say, Jesus entered into the mountain. Do people enter mountains? Men climb mountains. What do you mean, entered into the mountain? Because he was digging into the spirit. What does this thing mean? Lord, this body in my spirit, what's the meaning? What are you saying? What are you doing? And then you press. And when you press long enough, something happens. It's the way of the wise. It's the way of the virgins. They commit themselves to every strand of God's movement. Elijah was there on the mountain, interceding, and he saw just a feast of a man's hand. He knew his story had changed. He knew how to attend. He knew how to dig into it. That's the way of the virgins. Men that commit their all to God. If God as much as move as a strand, they will live there until something comes out of it. 
Every wise man gave birth to a body. And he said to Mary in Luke 1 35, and the Holy Ghost will come upon thee, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. And that thing that will be formed in you shall be called the Son of the Highest. So Mary tended it. Instantly, Mary left Galilee and went to meet Elizabeth because she knew for this matter. I need to manage it. If she had stayed in her location, maybe pressure would have aborted that child because she was not yet betrothed. They would have said, you are a harlot and the pressure would have aborted the child. So instantly she separated herself. So when men have body, the second protocol is separation. A separation. A separation. So a body came. Usually my friends will come to me on Saturday, say, let's go and watch Chelsea. But I have a body. I'm pregnant. And pregnant people don't watch football much. So I will separate from my friends and I will go to the closet and stay with God and I'm fertilizing Bakata, Rakida. After a while, you will see my pregnancy. My pregnancy may become the gift of word of knowledge. My pregnancy might become the gift of healing. My pregnancy can become fame. And all of us were together and all of a sudden, everybody begins to talk about Apostle Michael Roku. And you are saying, ah, not be all of us there here. All of us were here, but how many of us nurtured our body? What you are seeing is pregnancy because they don't hide pregnancy. You hide body in the closet. When it germinates to a pregnancy, you can come to the public. They looked at you. They said, ah, is he not in here? No, I used to be. Now I'm the mother of Jesus. I used to be Virgin Mary, but now I am the mother of Jesus. Because I have not taught body. Bodies lead to separation. So he said to the wife of Manoah, because of that child, you will not drink any strong wine. So she can't go to occasions anymore. Because if you give her wine and she refuses, she may become your enemy. So she doesn't need to go to the occasion anymore. Many people don't understand the fight of destiny. God gives you a body that will change your story. You waste it on Facebook. You waste it on Instagram. You waste it on Twitter. And you cross your leg. You think you are beautiful. When you are 40 years old, go back to the mirror and you will hear a different story. That face that used to be your God, you will discover that even your body lies to you. Because the face would have changed. The stomach would have come out. Those things that you looked at, even in time, you will discover you erred. But the men that not your body, when they become old, even that thing they nurtured, those things have a life of themselves. So, so when the fathers grew old, they called their children, say, gather around me, you sons of Jacob. Sit around me, you servants of Israel, and I will tell you the things that will happen to you. And after blessing them, he said, he rested with his fathers because he battered something. The Lord, the word came to Jacob, he lightened upon Israel. He managed that word, and that word became a generation. Many cannot separate that's why our life is katwa. No great public. Do you see your governor every day? No king is raised in the public. They told you, you are a prophet, but he did nothing to your life. He said, and the child, John, Luke 180, was in the wilderness until the day of his showing forth unto Israel because he knew that he was the voice of the one crying in the wilderness to become that voice he needed to separate himself and he hid in the wilderness when he came out he was unstoppable the Pharisees came to him they said who art thou are you Elijah are you one of the prophets he said I'm the voice of the one crying in the wilderness you can't stop him even Herod when he wants to hear the word of the Lord, he goes to hear John. You can't deny the power that came from his spirit because he had not taught bodies through separation. And when a man separates long enough, then God appears. For Moses, it took 40 years. Yours may be three days, but you have never separated. Yours may be one month, but you have never separated. A fornicator can become a prophet. It depends on what you do with your body. It's pathetic if you don't have one. But it's worse when you have an aborted. 
but wise men nurture bodies. This is what will make us great. The Bible said God is not a respecter of person, but God will not lie. His standards will remain the same. This is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. And you will think Jesus will run to the cathedral. He went to the wilderness. Because separation comes before encounters. And after the separation, in Matthew 4, 11, he said, angels minister to him. It's not too late, my brother. It's not too late, my sister. The burdens the Lord quickens in your heart. Separate yourself and nurture them. He's bigger than prophesying to you on the altar that you are blessed. Because a man that God pours himself to, truly is blessed. That's why he said to Mary, blessed art thou among all women. This is the truth of the gospel that is not told to believers. That's why believers are wanton. Daddy here can be a grandfather to most of us. He said he slept for 15 minutes, 15 minutes yesterday. And it's normal statement. Meanwhile, some of us here slept for 10 hours. Because we don't take the responsibility for existence. And we hope that will be great. The body of Christ needs to be awakened. That's why the church is infantile. Because very few take responsibility for destiny. Tonight, the Lord wants to provoke an encounter. It may be just one person. I'm okay. I didn't come to preach to crowd. Because most times when God raised men, there are few. Many came to Jesus, he picked 12. Out of the 12, he counted 3. I may be speaking to one person. But if God gets one man, that one man can change his world. Gone are the days when church was a strategy of carrying people along. God is raising an army now. And they that have an ear, he said they will hear what the spirit of God is saying to the churches. So hearing is a function of ear. If you don't have an ear, even if the spirit scream, you can't hear. We rise to our feet and pray. You want to pray like a man who is desperate for an encounter.